Aloha and welcome to episode five of Uncut with Kobe and Andrew. Kobe, we have a very exciting guest today. I know. We've, I'm excited. We both know him for a while. We've seen his journey through this creative industry and, you know, all the things he's been creating. I know. He's seriously so inspiring, but also just like a brother to us. All right, guys. Today we got Nainoa Langer, super talented filmmaker, producer, um, and just like overall content creator. And, you know, he's a Molokai native, but he's been to a crazy amount of countries so many countries probably more countries than most people have uh-huh. gone to their in a short amount lives. of time too and yeah what's cool is like you know he travels to these places but he's using his craft to tell their stories and indulge himself in the culture and, and make connections yeah yeah so let's get into it he's also a music producer oh yeah and he created the little intro track for our podcast Q intro track Oh, it feels like a family reunion. Yeah. I know. <laughs> this, guys. this is basically like one of the lunches or whatever we have you know, to catch up. <laughs> I know. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Now. I know you guys, you're so busy. I, yeah, but I'd make time for you guys any day. And oh. you live really far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm out in the country. Not as far as me. But. Yeah, true. Oh, true. <laughs> I didn't have to fly in. Oh, yeah. You guys both had the furthest commute. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. So Nye is here to talk story with us about his journey as a filmmaker, social influencer, and you come actually all the way from Molokai. Mm-hmm. So tell us about your humble beginnings yeah. and how you tell us about your life growing up. Well, Molokai is a very small island. You guys know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, to me, it feels like growing up in a small town anywhere. I mean, a lot of places in Hawaii have that, but Molokai mm-hmm. is like a small island Mm -hmm. and everybody knows everybody everybody knows everybody Mm -hmm. it's not like you can just hop over and anytime you want and go meet new people or whatever so uh yeah i grew up in a very uh humble community everyone knows everyone everyone takes care of everyone Mm -hmm. um very sheltered is another way i'd say it and Mm -hmm. i think uh that was probably a big play player in why i wanted to get out and see the world so, yeah, I mean, but Molokai is like home for sure. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. special to me. Yeah. Definitely want to go back there at some point and and make my roots. Yeah, establish again. roots there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so were you a cr- did you start in filmmaking when you're on Molokai or was it? No, like you, you had like a GoPro or something, right? So like because you were a surfer. I mean, you're always like you surfed on Molokai and you're that's kind of no, no. Oh, no. I didn't know that. No, I didn't start surfing till a couple years ago. And uh before so like growing up i played a lot of sports mm-hmm. um so that was my thing and like I, I mean i was always outdoors and we'd go to the beach a lot but i wasn't like uh filming anything i didn't have i think i remember like my first camera was like the flip cameras you remember like the oh, little yeah, yeah, yeah. rectangle bricks yeah 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 with just a little thing on there and i didn't even that was just to like that was before the gopro <laughs> yeah it was like Way it was like before. a square like yeah it looked like the zoom yeah if anybody yeah, knows yeah. what that is <laughs> it looked like an old ipod with a giant oh, thing on it dating yourselves yeah um but no i actually i everything i'm doing now is nothing like how i grew up to be honest i mean um i played a lot of sports and nothing creative like there was i mean i drew and stuff in yeah. high school like you do but so what like sparked that for you like what what was that first thing that you me- remember that kind of got you interested uh honestly it was i it was years after i left molokai oh, okay. when i when i moved over here to oahu i you know i started working at the hospital or like queen's hospital and stuff and and this was kind of right at the cusp of where social media gopros were getting really popular everyone is kind of posting their mm-hmm. adventures and stuff so like i don't consider it like a single spark it was just kind of influenced yeah, yeah. by what i'd seen on like you know the rise of social media and, and seeing everything that people were doing because when i got here i was still very active i was still hiking i was doing a bunch of stuff outdoors mm-hmm. and i was like oh well you know, i see people posting about their stuff like maybe i could do that too so mm-hmm. i bought a gopro and just kind of started sharing that stuff back then social media wasn't like so much instagram yeah. so you're talking about like youtube and like mm-hmm. is vine a thing yeah Wait, vine yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely vine yeah. was one of a uh, a key factor for sure and like we were when making content and that's kind of like today's tiktok mm-hmm. in a sense but you had six seconds to tell a story or tell your create story something get, yeah yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. crazy yeah so it was fun but yeah. um yeah this was this was probably in 2014 2015 
um, when, you know, it was a lot more cool. Or, I mean, it, it was less, you'd see it less, the saturation of, like, mm-hmm. yeah, all you, the creation. You, you were, yeah, it was, like, the beginning of, like, that whole yeah, thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was it was fun. It was it was very innocent, too, you uh. know? Yeah, yeah, just having yeah, fun with exactly. your GoPro and yeah. your buddies. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So what kind of stuff would you film? Um, so I'd go to Sandy's a ton. <laughs> you know, like I'd be just in the short break and stuff. And uh, I still have all my old videos and clips up from like those days. Oh, nice. I'd, I'd, we'd do a lot of like cliff jumping. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we kind of just go around the island and try to send some flips and stuff yeah, off the yeah, cliffs. Yeah. That always did well. Um, hikes were fun. Those were probably like the main three things was hikes, cliff jumping, and like sandy's short break (laughs) so so how did you go from like just filming yourself and your friends like jumping off cliffs and like fun stuff like that to it becoming like a paid gig yeah it uh honestly i mean i got some attention from it like i remember gopro of the day was a thing that was like yeah yeah yeah, feature that clip and i remember i so the whole time i'd be you know and i was working on the with the gopro i was working at queens so i was in the hospital and like kind of just really not in a good place mentally of like, I don't really know where I want to be. I don't know what I want to do. And so when I got attention for doing all of that stuff, it kind of like, it was a, it was a little like morale booster. I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. this is cool. Like I'm, you know, something I'm kind of good at that people. Mm-hmm. And I don't like know, doing and you like doing exactly. And I, and I love it. So, um, the thing for me was like, okay, maybe I can do something with this or maybe I can go somewhere with it. And, um, it wasn't like a certain project came through that was like, oh, you can work on this and that'll just catapult me. It was just, I wanted to keep making, I wanted to just elevate, you know, mm-hmm. I'd, I'd seen more really cool videos of people inspiring me and, and uh, just the look that they had. So I was like, oh, maybe I'll buy a DSLR, buy a, like my first, you know, point and shoot camera. Um, and that became, I guess, I feel like it opened doors for mm-hmm. me to just be like, okay, now you're like a more serious creator. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But and like not just being on a GoPro and stuff. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I know. So, I mean, so like growth is all about like you know taking leaps of faith and whatnot. You know, mm-hmm. like I know you're working at Queens for a little bit and, um, like, you were, were you, you were working there for a while and like you know is that something you wanted to do for a long time or like you know what 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 was that like moment where you're like no I, I need to leave this job and focus on creating. Yeah, that. I feel like it. I feel like that built up over over time. Uh-huh. I was at Queens for three years, so mm-hmm. from nineteen to like twenty two. Yeah, pretty much like mm-hmm. yeah. Those are and those are like. I feel like I matured really late too because Molokai is like you don't really get exposed. Right, so right, by right. the time I left, I was still was very not who I am. Uh-huh. Or I mean, just not secure in myself. Yep, and like yep. those three years after, I was just I was just working there because it was a, it was a job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Honestly, like I needed to take care of myself. I needed to pay for things, and. The three years there, I want to say like halfway in between that is when I picked up a GoPro. And then the moment, yeah, again, it wasn't like just a moment. It was a couple, you know, it was months and months of like, I know I want to do it. And then just being terrified to yeah, leave yeah, yeah. what I, what I, you know, that, like, had stability. Used to it. Yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. The stability. And I was, you know, I, I don't have kids. I don't have a family. I didn't have anyone else to worry about. So I was like, you know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to, I should do it now before it gets like right. mm-hmm. to the point mm-hmm. where I yeah, 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 yeah. at that point. Yeah. What was your first paid job? Do you remember as a creator? Oh, actually, I mean, uh, it might have been, I know it was very little money. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> like Everybody's story media. is yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like, maybe I think I got like. Trade for exposure. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got like a hundred bucks maybe for like making some 15 second video somewhere. But I, then I it was just really like, remember. you got paid for something yeah you love doing right mm-hmm. and they're just like yeah th- and that was like a definitely a big kind of like push because it's like okay maybe i can actually go uh-huh. somewhere with this and there's no cap to it you know? yeah yeah exactly you're working a job it's just you know hourly mm-hmm. and I, that's that's great but for me it wasn't it wasn't uh, a good option mm-hmm. i feel like when you made that decision mm-hmm. to leave queens yeah what was your thought process there and like yeah. what was like that next step like what did you have to do and like yeah i i honestly i had zero zero backup plan yeah because there, there's so many people watching and they're like you know a lot of them are like stuck in like a job or mm-hmm. something that they're doing that they, they don't feel 
like they're ready to leave and whatnot. Yeah. So, you know, like what, what was that push for you? you Absolutely. I, I think it, it was definitely more internal for me. Um, very emotional of like, I'd show up to work and be hating it. Like mm -hmm. I was just bummed out. It wasn't a good environment, honestly. Like just being in a hospital, it was pretty bad vibes for yeah, most of the yeah, time. Yeah. And, and again, like I wasn't in a place that I could handle um, that type of stuff. So uh, my thought process was I went through a lot of back and forth struggling with like, honestly, like mild depression maybe even of, of like wanting to be out doing what I love doing trying to make you know some money out of it thinking i could make a living there but then just being paralyzed by fear of just like mm -hmm. like yeah. what if this doesn't work out um you know what if things don't go as as i planned um and so when i did it again like i didn't have any backup mm -hmm. plan mm -hmm. really i had like maybe like two or three jobs lined up that i was like oh i can quit and hopefully you know just kind of bills and yeah pay, these, pay the <laughs> next couple of bills i'll i'll you know just keep trying to do what i do and when I quit, I remember being, I think I lost like two of those jobs or like oh, no. two of those oh, jobs okay. kind of fell through. Yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. And I, I barely, I, you know, like I had enough money for like a month after. Uh -huh. I was like, oh my God, I don't yeah. know what to do after yeah, this. Yeah. And yeah, that was probably like the, the, one of the scariest parts. For a few months, I was like scraping by. Uh -huh. um, and that's not like, I feel like that's not the smart way that people would do it you know or just like but, why would you quit your job yeah, but, without having anything planned out but did you feel like that like sort of like forced you to like i'm sure you had yeah, to yeah, hustle exactly. your oh it put, yeah. Me, yeah. it put me back against the wall uh -huh. mm -hmm. and i was like i need to like if i don't make something happen i'm just i don't want to go back there yeah you know i could easily get another little job or anywhere but i was just like no i'm just gonna stick out um you know try to keep just making i focused mostly on just what i was making the quality of like what i was doing and mm -hmm. that was i knew in my head i was just like i want to keep getting better and better and elevating but i think that was seen you know that and that got like the attention of the right people um and eventually it just it led me to like you know i started working at bd like a few months after i after i quit these um, um, beautiful destinations mm -hmm. yeah and then you know from there it was just like growth just kept coming and i and i tried to keep just focusing on like what i was making mostly instead of worrying about everything else well so. that 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 whole part about just like leaving and taking that chance yeah. and like having faith that it's all gonna work out that's probably a huge blessing in disguise because when people look at your work and to hear that you've only at that point where you went to beautiful destinations you had only been doing it for not not that long of a mm -hmm. time but yeah. then your work was so exceptional and it was so different and so that's i think you probably had to hustle and like kind of like get yourself to a point where yeah. you were it looked like you had been creating for years yeah yeah and that was a i mean that was another thing of like uh i you know at, at the time too what uh the space that we were doing like the things that we were the type of content we were creating wasn't very saturated or it just wasn't like it, it was pretty still niche like at the fresh, time yeah, like fresh. Yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. so it wasn't very hard now i mean now you see people doing the uh -huh. craziest things uh -huh. that don't have any like experience and they just they learned on youtube and they can create yeah. the craziest stuff but back then it was like yeah it was I, w I wouldn't say i'm a pioneer but there was it was v definitely very fresh it was a lot newer, so. I would say you're a pioneer. You yeah, were a yeah, pioneer. Yeah. You're in that first group of people who are like quote unquote influencers before influencers were really a thing. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's like the, yeah. yeah, like the content creators. You know, like the the, the types of videos. Yeah, the travel stuff. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think going into this like generation where everyone like values travel over other things, you mm -hmm. know, and then, like you guys are like creating those types of like travel videos and destination stuff, mm -hmm. and like that was like so like inspiring and cool, and I think that you know. Yeah, you get, yeah. I, I would consider you a pioneer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's why I, I think mean, a yeah. lot of people chose this career or chose to get into it because they would see people like you mm -hmm. out there doing it, traveling the world and creating beautiful videos. Yeah. And then they're like, well, I want to get, I want to be like nine. Sure, uh -huh. sure, uh -huh. sure, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. like the old generation now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an old man. There's like yeah. a whole another generation Absolutely. coming up now with different things and different tools. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, should we talk about like your, your time at BD a little bit or like? Like, yeah, yeah. Like sure. traveling and like you how did went that to, do you even know how many countries that yeah, you yeah. visited? About, i think i'm at like 43 or 
something like that oh, wow. around so there. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. But this was in the span of two years, a year and a half. Yeah, but then like coming from Otai, yeah. yeah, you know, <laughs> like you know, humble yeah. beginnings, and then you move to Oahu for three years. Yeah, kind of like growing and then like you, you get put into this position where like you're traveling to a new country every week you know mm-hmm. what was that like for you yeah soaking in all this these this culture and like these experiences and yeah i think i think well it started the biggest one was even moving to new york oh yep, yep. so i mean i lived on oahu first even oh, even oahu from molokai is like right? yeah, exactly no, I know. crazy I shot know, yeah. yeah getting used to a more, city yeah a city, city the people <laughs> people tra- yeah, traffic yeah, yeah, yeah you know and uh so even from going from Oahu to to New York was like it was almost overwhelming but I also felt very um just secure there because I I, you know I was there for a purpose you know it was a time in my life I was like on my grind Mm -hmm. and that's where you go when you're in that phase you're like if you're hustling like New York's got that energy Mm -hmm. and so it was a little scary at first but then I just found myself kind of settling really nicely in I also had a kind of group of people that i was friends with so it wasn't like lonely at all Mm -hmm. um but then yeah leaving from having new york as home base to like bouncing to maybe like six or seven countries at a time within a couple weeks was like it was it was oh it was overload honestly (laughs) it was so much fun it was so you're probably like where am i yeah waking up in a different (laughs) country every day every day pretty much it was tough i mean uh it was so eye-opening uh-huh. you know you're getting so much new I, I remember my first time leaving the country too i was like i was 23 i hadn't mm-hmm. had a passport before that and Where'd you go? i went to macau oh shit nice and <laughs> this, this story is kind of crazy because they flew me from hawaii this was before i moved over to new york they kind of like this was my test uh-huh. my test project yeah, with them yeah, yeah. um they flew me from oahu to hong kong i'm um, you know first time passport i'm traveling alone uh oh my God. having to like figure out customs uh-huh. yeah. having to figure out all of the you know visa situation or just like uh-huh. maneuvering through a foreign place and hong kong was fine then hong kong you take a uh, you take a drive over like the hong kong bridge into into macau and i was like nobody spoke english mm-hmm. i was in a cab by myself you know i told him basically showed just him my address. phone i was like hey dude <laughs> take I, here. just take me to macau i just kept saying macau macau and he's like okay and then <laughs> I, I gotta trust this guy that i have no idea you yeah, know yeah. can't communicate with them so i sat in a you know taxi for like two hours just kind of like i hope he takes where me to am macau. i <laughs> hope he takes me to macau and it was also like 1 a.m in the morning oh dang oh, i landed so late it was so like i was so like disoriented yeah, not yeah. knowing Long where i am too, yep. and it was it was an adventure honestly it was like my first uh-huh. i feel like real adventure that i had because i was like oh my god i don't know where i'm going i don't know what i'm doing and yeah i got to the hotel i, I met up with with boys there after and it was we spent a week there and i was like the, my, it was my first like exposure into the outside world mm-hmm. and it was like everything i, I could have imagined mm-hmm. yeah so rich i mean even the place that i went to was like completely different too yeah. i could have gone to somewhere in like europe or south america but yeah i was in macau and it was like mm-hmm. a whole different experience whole different yeah, world yeah. so i mean you must have loved it because you kept going to places yeah yeah so I, that just like was the f- taste and then you're just like take me wherever send me yeah, wherever yeah so after that you know i moved to new york like the week after i got home from that got all my stuff together went that was out. another leap of faith yeah yeah like and hey, then moved to new york take yeah, this job offered me a job and this was like right before Christmas too. I didn't even. I think I went to New York, spent two days there. They flew me out literally right after that to go to Finland for like another week right before Christmas. And then by the time I got home for like Christmas break, whenever like every one of my uh-huh, friends was still uh-huh. in college, um, I'd already been to like four or five different countries or something so within crazy. like a month. Yeah, that's and crazy. I was like, yeah. I come back and everyone's just like, dude, where have Where's you been? been? Yeah, yeah. And it's been tough to keep up, you know? So yeah. it was a fast, it was a fast time in my life for sure. It was fun. Of all of the trips um, with, with beautiful destinations, mm. what was your like most memorable one? Most memorable? Macau? There's a couple. Yeah, there were like a few like, yeah. that come to mind. Yeah. Uh, in the UAE has always been a fun one where we've done these projects with like the Abu Dhabi tourism board, Dubai mm-hmm. tourism um and those as like 
we we they used to do these like influencer trips oh, yeah. where they'd bring like Every, a bunch of people like out 10 or 12 of like really really big photographers or people on in the influencer space and they brought them for like this one abu dhabi project that we were a part of and it was like the biggest just party <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot i mean we got yeah, work yeah, done yeah, yeah. we got yeah. work done we did what we were there for to do but um they brought together so many just like like-minded people and we got to all hang out and in, in like kind of luxury for yeah you know nice. like a week straight and that's huge because it's so, like you know people always say like surround yourself with like sure you know like-minded people and all that and mm -hmm. that, that must have been cool to like be around like all those mm -hmm. creatives in a in a freaking cool country mm -hmm. you know living yeah. in luxury it's, creating it's and like it, that opportunity doesn't happen yeah. you know like yeah. that's not a yeah. thing and so like it was like really the first i'd done of that but i think even anyone's really done mm -hmm. at that point in time um now it's a different story you know everyone mm -hmm. kind of like does that and goes to travel yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. um another really memorable ones were probably the latest projects that i did with them where you know we went to the amazon mm -hmm. um and that was with me and sam potter mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh that was probably just like again full adventure for the entire time we spent two weeks in like uh the ecuadorian and peruvian amazon and that was just like off the grid like yeah, I, people don't no contact kind of, with yeah, anyone yeah. so uh -huh. we went down the river for several hours and like lived with the the morani tribe for two weeks yeah and i used to like <laughs> borrow some batteries from me because he was like i don't know when i can yeah. charge batteries or like i need to just be out there for i a did while. borrow batteries from you yeah that's so crazy. i feel yeah. like it takes like a certain kind of person to just be like okay i'm game for what whatever you just sure. like jump on a plane yeah. and be yeah. like i don't know who's picking me up like yeah. i don't know exactly where we're going but like i'm down i think at the, the time in my life that was yeah, like it worked out perfectly yeah it worked out perfectly and that's what i was i was looking for that that's uh -huh. what i wanted to do if you asked me to do that now it might be a little <laughs> different story i'm yeah, like yeah. you know i've got responsibilities <laughs> now <laughs> so um yeah i think it's just like the natural progression of that that was a section of my life that i'm like really adventurous that's and so and cool just like not many yeah, people can have that yeah. kind of that story yeah. probably like very tiny percentage of people yeah. have that story that they've traveled for work like to 40 plus countries mm -hmm. that's awesome that's fun in that yeah. time frame yeah yeah <laughs> people don't travel 43 countries in like their lifetime yeah you know yeah, true. <laughs> and you did it in a few years so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like evolution of your work you know you started creating on the the gopro you know cliff diving videos these travel videos and all that like mm -hmm. and you know you know most more recently your, your work has like evolved into you know the storytelling of like mm -hmm. the culture and all that so like tell us a little bit about that and like yeah where you're going. a little bit of fancy camera now yeah yeah yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. not um, a gopro anymore <laughs> yeah I, don't, I actually haven't touched a gopro <laughs> like, i know and that's part of probably a tool i should have yeah but, yeah yeah know. um yeah the evolution it, it i think there was only so far you know we could go with with these hype fun cool travel videos and at the at the time uh as the space was kind of getting more saturated with it even for myself i you know felt a little burnt out just kind of repeating the same stuff um the progression was like, okay like i wanted to go a little deeper into this places we were going um and it kind of matches perfectly with the amount of travel that i was doing mm -hmm. um because when i was going you know different country every other day or so that's when i could pump out really quick just like yeah, flashy they're, they're, content uh -huh, uh -huh. and at a point where i wanted to get deeper that's when i started to spend a little bit more time in a country like mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. couple of weeks or a little bit more um and focus on telling a story of like our experience there or, and then the people there and then just kind of getting to experience the the culture the the environment the food just being in that place and truly kind of like going deeper mm -hmm. um so yeah, my work definitely kind of moved into wanting to tell more of a story. And then just from there, it's just been like trying to elevate it more and more. And that's where I'm at now is like, I'm still, um, you know, trying to, trying to capture stories and tell people's, give people voices. But uh, the way that I do it is just like how I'm going to keep going up and up and up and a notch. So uh, that's a big, that's what I want to do. Mindset change because before I was just like captured the most beautiful footage mm -hmm. of these countries mm -hmm. and just yeah. very quick, like quick, surface yeah, level, yeah. exactly. Versus like now you're trying to like instead of just shoot everything, yeah, like pretty indulge shots. yourself in the culture, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's intentional, space, yep. um, and it was intentional before, but in a different way, yeah, yeah. You so know? now it's like personally yeah. your next growth level of growth, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah. And then I wanted to learn more aspects of the whole creation process too. And so like music came into my lap and stuff. And, you know, that was like a whole nother, uh, I just like journey of, of, of learning too. It was like learning how to produce and everything. So, but they go hand in hand and it was like the creative process of like, okay, I want to try to see where I'm at with my you know creativity and like where I can, take so i honestly think I, if, if you put anything in front of me like yeah, i'd be yeah. able to learn it at uh-huh. some point yeah, yeah everything I would you say pretty so. much is like self-taught right yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and and it's not hard these days too like you have access so to resources. so much information yeah. um but i don't think you give you enough yourself enough credit though because like you are like your videos i mean it takes a special it's like your perspective and like everything of your background and where you're from and all mm. that it it all matters and like where you are today i i feel like there's certain things that people can't learn on youtube and even like sure. as a music producer i'm like i i would not have the patience like learn <laughs> how to create yeah. music like mm-hmm. you do yeah. like there's something it's i don't know you're just yeah i think you know I, what I it is it's like that. especially in this like day and age like everything is so accessible with like the mm-hmm. internet and everything and all the research are there but it like it takes you know like a, a type of person or like you know that level of like Commitment, commitment. Yeah. yeah. Commitment to like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> commitment to like, you know, like so dedicate yourself to yeah. Understand learning. Something. Yeah. yeah. Understand, mm-hmm. like, it's different if like you're that. just like, you can just like quickly learn something and, you know, like mm-hmm. cheat something. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the way that you do it, you really do put a lot of time into mm-hmm. your work and, um, you see it in the films. And, yeah. yeah. Sure. So you see it in the final product and it's, it's amazing. Thank you. So, you know, we, we hear about all these highs, all this travel and all this stuff, but, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure there's some times where, it was tough, right? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, wh- was there a moment or time where, like, you were like, oh, why am I doing this? Or, mm-hmm. And how did you get past it? It's it's a weird, I think in the creative space in general, you those those times are, like, not rare at all. You, oh, yeah. You know, you go through these, like, waves of, uh, you know, just kind of, like, excitement of, like, oh, I'm doing this really, really cool work. And then, um, you know, somehow you'll lose momentum or you just, like, you'll feel like you're not doing enough or, like... Mm-hmm. That's a that's a tough thing that I've, you know, had a lot of, you know, struggles with is like, we live in such a comparative or comparative mm-hmm. culture, and social media, especially and with social media yeah. now. It's like it's very easy to see what everyone else is doing. It's very easy to like feel like you're not doing enough or like moving. FOMO. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, those were probably like the biggest struggles career wise or just like you know mental wise that's Mm -hmm. that's always tough so um i never really had a concern with like what i was doing like once once it became like my thing i was like yeah this is what i'm what i'm doing it now it's more of like um why should anyone care or Mm -hmm. why should i keep caring about this Mm -hmm. because it, it clearly it brings me a lot of joy to create but where how does this go past me? Like, where does this impact people? How does it, you know, incite change that right. I, that I want to have? So I think that's where a lot of kind of the anxiety comes from too, because it can be a little, a little intimidating and kind of crippling to be like, how does my work fit in? Or like, where, or like, yeah, what is yeah, it that yeah. I want to like show the world? What's my message? Mm-hmm. Um, and well, so, also paying the bills. And, and that too. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And so those are kind of like most of the, I'd, I'd, I'd say like this, the root of where those struggles or those thoughts come from. Um, so what then, do you turn to? Like what, what helps you stay mm-hmm. like motivated or grounded? Or like what's your why, you know, why, yeah. Yeah, why are you continuing this? Yeah, on, honestly, uh, I get, uh, I get a lot of fulfillment just from if I can say that what I worked on now is a little better than like what I was working on before. Mm-hmm that's a huge win for me you know it's just the the feeling of like okay i'm I'm kind of improving in my work or progression the evolution you know exactly and so it's i I could sit all day and tell myself oh you you know you're doing good or like you just try to like uh Uh what's it called words of affirmation or Mm -hmm. something and that would help but i am very much a i need to see some kind of progress see some results because um even even now what i'm working on it's i haven't been putting out anywhere near as much content or just stuff that you know i used to be doing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i know that what i'm working on now has meaning to me Mm -hmm. and if i'm gonna i want to do it the best that i can do like that's that's what's keeping me going 
So it's a little less quantity or just like less uh, consistency with stuff. But I feel like at least I'm moving in a way that I can be stoked on, be proud of. And that's yeah, a little bit. That's a big thing, and that's yeah. what matters, you know. That yeah, it comes like that's a very like mature perspective to mm-hmm. have. Yeah, because you you've been through that space where you're just like producing tons yeah. of content yeah. and yeah. like and then the feeling the need to create for like other people versus just like you forget it to create for like yourself yeah. too, you mm-hmm. know. So yeah, and I think there's there's always ways even for what you're already working on. There's always ways that you can like kind of up your game or just keep do it a little bit better. So I've done that a lot with, um, I've worked closely with the Elenium crew Mm -hmm. doing like their music kind of mini documentary recaps and stuff. And if, if I remember watching like my first views that I did with them and I was like, how would I think this is a good video (laughs) when I made it? You know, I think that's like every creator, (laughs) you know? So it's like, if I can look back and then I know that what I'm doing now is like light you're just way more advanced or better than what i was doing before that's that's kind of like encouraging it's really um strengthening for me i guess Mm -hmm. it's a good it's a good motivator yeah Yeah. so it's awesome yeah so what's next for nye Mm, without saying too much (laughs) no i'm not even working on anything secret (laughs) 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 um what's next is i i want to continue to kind of um i'm exploring a lot more with with music still you know, I'm still kind of taking that really seriously. And then the film work, um, you know, I, I just, as long as I'm still telling these good stories, um, that's going to be really fulfilling for me. I'm moving more into, I feel like, uh, a role that I'd like to work with more people, you know, as a collaborative effort. effort. Um, there's only so far that doing it yourself can take you. Um and so for me, I, I, I have in my head and I've actively kind of like put in place some of the things that I want to, um, the bigger ideas, the bigger projects that I'd like to do. And it would be kind of a, a, a merging of both of my passions of like music and film without saying too much that it would be that. I can't even say yeah, what yeah, it looks yeah, like, yeah, 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 but. but it would be bringing those two things that I love together um in a in a way that i've never done it yet so in like a bigger scale so um yeah that's next for me and also i'm just taking every day at a time um projects that are coming through i'm I'm being a lot more selective i think with my projects um you know and 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 now that the direction has been or the sales have been set in the direction i want to go i know it's a lot easier to be like yeah this isn't gonna fit what i'm doing right now Mm -hmm. this is a waste of my or not a waste of my time but it's not it's not a lot. It's not going to push me where, yeah. I, where you know, my, my head's, where I'm headed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. That's exciting. In a very vague. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah. that's exciting because, you know, like, I've known you for a long time. We've, known, we've all known each other for a while. And um, it's it's cool to see, you know, like, where everything is taking you and, like, where you're going. So yeah. I'm so proud of you. I yeah, appreciate it, guys. <laughs> and working with you guys has been an absolute blessing, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't, so know if, I don't know if they know at home, but we have a... We have our own company. We got a yeah. production yeah, company. Yeah, 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 and we're so. working together and uh, making cool films, so... Yeah, the whole collaborative thing, like yeah. what yeah. you're talking about. It, so it can be so powerful mm-hmm. because we all separately have gone through the motions of trying to do it all on our own and hustling yeah. on our own. Yeah. When you find a group that's, like, you're also super aligned with, Mm-hmm. And they all come with their own set of like giftings and perspectives and talents. It's like it's amazing what happens when you put a group of people like that together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for for a long time, I think that might have been a big little ego trip of me, or for for myself personally, was yeah, that that actually pushed me to kind of like want to learn more in music too. I was like, oh yeah, I kind of want to be able to do everything. Yeah. You know, I I want to be able to see if I can. Uh, every aspect of like a film I could I could make Uh so I I was like I'll I'll learn sound design I'll learn all this music production and then bring it into film so it's 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 good though I and I like the idea of now that I know how to do it I you know I'm open to working with people and being able to understand like if I work with someone who's making or like scoring my film I could like communicate with them yeah yeah yeah, you know I can actually such a good strength to have like a skill to have you know like being able to understand Mm -hmm. because you know I don't think a lot of people realize that like a film is not just like the visuals Mm -hmm. the audio side of it too it helps bring in that emotion and Uh yeah and I think that's that's what you 
know separate your films from a lot of other people's stuff yeah. like the, the layers and like the different elements you have like the sound design you know you can like watch or you can just like listen to your film and like you know see the different elements and stuff like you should see as timelines um <laughs> but it's crazy because you I understand know. both sides of it I you know, know. And like and you how many hours have you spent trying to find the right song yeah for yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i always that think was like i wish i could just produce my own music you know <laughs> that's exactly that was the other thing i was like i just want to be able to make exactly what i hear in my head so i and i you know it took a while though it's not like and you're still learning yeah. yeah oh yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. i'm nowhere near the level of like what other people are at but like I can, like I can that, hang. I yeah, can but hang. that, like, dedication and commitment to, like, you know, build into this craft, like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah and, like, from not I mean, knowing yeah. anything. I mean, did you even have a musical background? No, no. not at all. <laughs> not I even played, band? I played, 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 like, ukulele <laughs> in, like, high school, like, local boy, you know? Um, yeah, it's fun, though. Well, we are so blessed to know you and have you as a friend and family member, and we love you and we're always cheering for you. Likewise, and likewise. Yeah, thank you for spending some time with us because I know that you're so so busy. But no, oh, thank you guys. Yeah. It's a, it's an honor to be on here. Honestly, I can't yeah, wait to see where this podcast goes for you. Yeah, we're stoked. Yeah, we can't mean, wait yeah. either. <laughs> we, we always like you know talk and you know have these discussions and talk about these big ideas. And I was like, time to execute. Mm-hmm. So we're stoked to have you on. All right. Well, how can people find you? Um, most of my work's on Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, actually. If yeah. I plug it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just at Nino Langer. Um, my artist name is Nye on Spotify. And yeah, that's where I'm at. Sick. Yeah, no, it's so crazy. But yeah, thank you for being with us, talking with us today, sharing your story. And um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Oh.